The Oklahoma Sooners are back to back to back to back to back. Big 12 champions. That's five in a row, in case you weren't counting my back to back to back to back to backs. And to win number six, suddenly they're going to have to do so without Kennedy Brooks, who has said he's going to set out the 2020 season. Now, here's what we know. When, when Kennedy Brooks made his decision to set out the 2020 season, we knew at that point that any player, regardless of the reason, any player who does not play in 2020 is going to have another year of eligibility granted to them. Now we know it's at least being discussed on a serious level that any player, regardless in 2020, regardless of whether you play or not, you have another year of eligibility and most likely coming your way. That's something that the NCAA is seriously taking into consideration. Rich, I, I, I look at this. I'm looking at the Oklahoma depth chart right now or, or, or the roster. There's not a, an actual depth chart out yet, but I'm looking at the roster and I'm looking at the running backs. It's crazy to not see Kennedy Brooks' name on there. I, I, I harbor no ill will for Kennedy Brooks. I wish him nothing but the best. I understand his decision. I, I what, what he's thinking and what he's thinking is what's best for him. I, I, I agree that you can make an argument that what he's doing is not best for the team. But at this level, when you come to situations that could potentially be a long-term health risk, you know, that, that there's so much information, some of it misinformation, some of it suspected information, some of it good information, but there's so much information on so many different angles about COVID-19. Kenny Brooks is looking at himself as a guy who has a chance to make a name for himself in the NFL. So he's making his decision not to play in 2020. So I have two questions for you. My first question is this. Have we seen the last of Kennedy Brooks in an Oklahoma football uniform? I do believe so. Why is that? One, we talked about how this year would really set him up for his most productive year at the collegiate level. An experienced offensive line being that feature back with the suspension of Ramondre Stevenson Mm -hmm. and having a group of capable but inexperienced running backs behind him, again, set him up to have his biggest year to date across all statistical categories, which then would set him up for the NFL, not only the combine, but also the draft. Mm -hmm. Looking at what's transpiring this season and the decision to opt out, potentially in preparation for the future in the NFL, I think the reason you don't see Kennedy Brooks return to the team is because it was his decision to leave. Oh, hundred percent. It wasn't a coaching decision. It wasn't a disciplinary decision. It was his decision to leave. And once you remove yourself from a group, let, let's, let's use a different term. Once you remove yourself from a family, it's hard to work your way back in. Well, and I'm going to, I'm going to take exception to that thought because I, I believe that any player across the board, was given the option to opt out. Look, if you don't want to do this this year, we get it. We understand. So I do think if Kennedy Brooks were to come back in 2021 and say, hey, coach, I want to talk. I want to come back. Let, let's, 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 what do I need to do? I think he's going to have the, that opportunity. I, I don't think this is a situation where a guy hits the transfer portal and then decides, oh, these are my other options? Uh, okay, let's coach, can I come back? I don't think it's that type of situation. I think it has to be looked at differently. And, and here's the reason why. Be, because everyone was given the option to sit out 2020. And, and if you're Lincoln Riley and you want to destroy your reputation that you have built and made such a – I mean, he's got a great reputation. And if you want to destroy that, tell a kid who set out because of COVID, tell him he can't come back to your team. And when you do that, everything's gone. Everything's gone. I don't know that Lincoln Riley would ever step in and say, you're not welcome here. But cracking that depth chart, I think, would be extremely difficult. Well, and that when, depth chart's about to get deeper for 2021. Right. And and we're not even talking about the potential signees, uncommitted mm-hmm. running back recruits. But I'm looking at the roster, much like you're doing. I'm seeing a guy like Seth McGowan. I'm seeing TJ Pleasure. And I'm seeing Marcus Major. Marcus Major and Seth McGowan could be a two-headed monster for at least two years. Mm-hmm. TJ Pledger is going to factor in this year. He may factor in next year in some way, shape, or form as he's only a junior. But what we know is you've got a big-bodied freshman 
in Seth McGowan, who's going to be entering his second year with this program in this system. You're talking about next year, 2021, right? Right. right. You're you're just you're not going to be able to keep these guys off the field forever because a guy says I want to come back. No, and I agree with you. And and here's the thing. Here, here's what I know is going to happen. Okay, I, th- this is what I know is going to happen. What I know is going to happen is that, you know, Kenny Brooks is going to be a redshirt sophomore this year, right? Or redshirt junior. Redshirt junior, sorry. He's going to be a redshirt junior this year, not a redshirt sophomore. But we, we know that, we know for sure that he's going to talk, he's going to have an evaluation done, and he's going to talk to an agent. Now, talking to an agent and signing with an agent, two different things. You can talk to agents and you can get information about yourself and about your position. As long as you don't sign a contract with an agent, you're still doubled, dubbed as an amateur. He's going to do that. He's going to get an evaluation and he's going to do that. Now, knowing that, here's what else we know. Two very important factors with a, pre- a precursor is that Kennedy Brooks is talented. Let's not forget, this is a guy who had, you know, Chuba Hubbard, who a lot of people declared as the best running back in the nation last season. Kenny Brooks had a higher yards per carry average than Chuba Hubbard. So he's a talented running back. So based off of those two things, he's a talented running back. He's going to test the waters of the NFL. Here's what we know. There's tape of him. And you and I have talked about this. It's the most important factor getting from one level to the next, be it from mm-hmm. high school to college, college to the NFL. The most important factor is tape. There is two. There are That's two. Debatable. No, it is. It is. No, tape is how you get your name out. Tape is what turns a coach's head. I'm not disagreeing with that. So, but when you make that leap into the NFL. Tape. Mesh, tape gets you to the combine. Mes- tape okay. gets you in front okay. of the. That I, that I can agree with. But the measurables are what get you a high draft pick. Yeah, but why why do those guys come out of nowhere? Sorry, I just knocked my microphone, by the way. So if mm-hmm. you're listening, I apologize if I ruptured your eardrums. The, you, every year, every year in the draft, you have those guys who come out of nowhere, right? They just come out of nowhere, and they're stars. And everyone's like, how, how, where did this kid come from? He was a sixth round, a fifth round, a seventh round draft pick, and he's a star. How did this happen? Right? Every year it happens. You know why? Because they didn't get their measurables done because they weren't at the combine. Mm -hmm. Why were they not at the combine? Tape. They didn't have enough good tape out there. Let's talk about Parnell Motley. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have started their, their fall camp. And you're hearing a lot of good things from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers about Parnell Motley. Parnell Motley has already intercepted Tom Brady. He's he's got he's logged a couple of inter- interceptions. He's logged some pass breakups. Parnell Motley, I don't know if he's going to make the roster or not, but people are surprised. You you look at the Tampa media and they're right. like, who's this Parnell Motley guy? Why he wasn't at the combine? Why? Because he did. He only had one season of good tape. Only one season. So he didn't get to the combine. Kennedy Brooks has two 1,000 yard rushing seasons. Redshirt for our redshirt freshman, redshirt sophomore, back to back, one thousand yard rushing seasons. He's got a good tape out there. He will turn heads. People will want to talk to Kennedy Brooks. Kennedy Brooks will get invited to the NFL Combine, which leads you to the second thing. The second thing that's important to note is this: Kennedy Brooks has a lot of tread left on his tires. He he's not coming out of here like a Rodney Anderson who's banged and bruised, or even a Trey Sermon for that matter who's banged and bruised. Kenny Briggs is leaving the University of Oklahoma with a lot of tread on his tires. Samaj P. Ryan was a fantastic running back for the University of Oklahoma. Why did he? Why is he not a star in the NFL? He was a workhorse for OU. He was a he snapped the ball, turned it hand to Ramondre Block. He didn't have a lot of tread left on the tires when he went to the NFL. That's not the case for Kennedy Brooks. Back to back. 1,000 yard seasons sharing a backfield with somebody else. And, and last season, not only did he share the backfield with with the preacher boy, with, with Trey Sermon, but he also shared the backfield with a running quarterback in Jalen Hurts. So when you, if you're an NFL exec, you're looking at his yards per carry average. You're looking at back to back 1,000 yards seasons. You're looking at the tape. You're looking at what he has. He is a, he's not a burst back. He is a good, he's a solid back. He's going to give you 
three and a half to four and a half yards per carry in the NFL. And he's got a lot of tread on the tires. Let, let me give you an example that may contrast what you're saying here. Uh, are we about okay? to argue, Rich? I don't know that we're about to argue, but I do want to give you an example here and get your take on this. Because you're talking about having tape, but not having the measurables mm-hmm. yet. Whereas we have an example where we had maybe a little bit of tape, but we had off-the-chart measurables at the NFL draft in 2019. I'm looking at a guy, DK Metcalf, all right? Played basically, I I get that he was on campus for three years, but when you play in two games and you have two receptions as a true freshman, I'm not counting that season as having considerable tape. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, we had 2017, we had 2018 seasons for DK Metcalf on file. We have that tape, but I mean, he's a guy who caught less than, than 60 seven passes he caught 67 for his career 65 in those two seasons okay but you got a stats brought up on your monitor there i do Mm -hmm. yards per catch what was the average 16.6 do you realize how incredible that is 21.9 do you realize how incredible that is i do so you you got two seasons of Mm -hmm. tape with a guy with blazing speed what do they see on two seasons worth of tape they saw this dude's fast and they saw those 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 high yards per catch averages, and that's all they needed. Again, what does Kenny Brooks have? He's got two seasons of tape, mm-hmm. two seasons where he where he broke the thousand yard barrier, sharing a backfield with two other guys, and he he broke the thousand yard barrier. That's all you need. Matt, I'm I'm looking at at Metcalf stats though, and I I get what you're saying about the yards per catch, but the sample size is not very no, large. That's, no, that's all you need. That, that, you need you need 26 catches to average 21.9 yards, and and that's enough to get you in. Absolutely, it is. Who did he play for? Mississippi. So he played in the SEC, mm-hmm. right? So he he get against the I best defenses in the country. I'm using name, air quotes. I can't even name the quarterback. It doesn't I matter. I couldn't have even told you Metcalf's name it, until he showed up at the combine. Uh, well, I could because I watched his dad play because I'm older than you. <laughs> but the point of the matter is, that, like they they saw the tape. All right. They saw two years of consistency, two years of of higher than average mm-hmm. yards per catch. OK, they, they saw that and they saw the speed on tape. That's all you need. You, and so they brought into the combine. Is this guy real? Is this real speed? Let's test it. And that's what they're going to do with Kennedy Brooks. They're going to say, right. look, you we two years, a thousand yards sharing the backfield. You've got something special about you. We want to take a closer look. That's all. That's tape gets you a closer look. Metcalf had two years of it. Kenny Brooks has two years of it. I feel like you're you're validating my point more than you're you're going against my point. <laughs> I, I was going to jump on here at the end and say I'll concede to you in this argument. I get what you're saying. I see it. I'm still holding on because we're both in agreement here. I'm holding on to the statement that the measurables are what get you that high draft pick. Metcalf, I don't think he headed into the combine thinking. Uh, let me rephrase that. I don't think NFL execs, decision makers, thought DK Metcalf heading into the NFL Combine would be a second-round draft pick. Now, he proved that he was worthy Mm -hmm. of that second-round draft pick by the measurables that he posted, by the interviews that he conducted, and how he conducted himself Mm -hmm. as an individual, as a human being around others. Right, and and he was there because of tape. Right. And And he had, by the way, he had an agent who said, look, DK, I I think, look, your dad's been through this. Your dad was a longtime NFL player. He knows the process. I know the process. We think you can be a day-two draft guy. And we can get you millions of dollars in guaranteed money. That's the agent selling him. And that's what I'm saying Kennedy Brooks is going to do. He's going to have an agent selling him. on because The, the difference, agent, Matt, though, is that Metcalf didn't take the year off. But This, it, this yeah, is this, all on Kennedy Brooks. Now. I understand, but this is a way different year. And that's what I'm saying. He, you've already got what you need on tape. You, you've got what you need. You condition your body. You prepare. I'm not saying 100%. See, I'm not 100% certain like you are that we've seen the last of Kennedy Brooks. I'm just saying it makes sense to believe that way Mm -hmm. because now if you're Kennedy Brooks, all you're doing now is you're testing those waters. You're talking to those agents. You're, you're going to get that evaluation done in October or November. And the NFL is going to come back. Hey, you're a day two draft guy. You're a day three draft guy. And he's preparing 
for the vertical. He's preparing for the right. 40. He's pre preparing for the three-cone shuttle. He's preparing for those interviews. He is preparing now for what's going to happen at the, at the combine in February because why? There's enough tape to get him an invite. I'm going to go back to the original point of this argument because I'm the one who spun off and created this counter argument, even if I was wrong in my <laughs> assumption here. Kennedy Brooks has enough on tape to get him an invite to the combine. Mm -hmm. I don't doubt that one bit. I'm not doubting his talent. I'm not doubting what he's capable of. I'm not doubting his work ethic. What I am saying, though, is that I think because he as an individual has chosen or has opted out of the season, has removed himself from the program by mm. doing so, I think for those reasons that that's why we don't see him in a suit right. uniform ever again. Now, I don't know what the counter arguments of that would be. I don't know what point you're making, and I don't see – mentally, I, I can't picture a way that Kennedy Brooks, after this decision – makes his way back to the University of Oklahoma. It I, just isn't there for me. I, I get it. And and I get that the 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 and I've already said the the depth chart's gonna be even deeper in twenty twenty one. And then but, you look at Kennedy Brooks and I could easily say of draft eligible running backs, he's top three. Right. I, I had him pegged as one of the best, if not the best running backs in the Big Twelve. But here's the thing back to back one thousand yard seasons sharing the backfield. Mm-hmm if he wants to come back, he's coming back. Lincoln Riley's not going to keep him off the team. Lincoln Riley's, and he's going to be given the opportunity. And if he's better than a TJ Pledger, if he's better than a Seth McGowan, if but, he's better than a Marcus Major, he's Lincoln Riley's not, Lincoln Riley wants to Matt, win football games Matt. and, and punishing a guy for setting out a season because of the cro is coronavirus. Is he punishing him or is no, he saying I'm, you made your mind? No, up? he's not. You, he's, he's <laughs> saying, it, look, if you're, if, if you're, if he's better than Seth McGowan, if he's better than Marcus Major, if he's better than TJ Pleasure, and Lincoln Riley doesn't play him, at that point it becomes punishment because you set out a season. So if he if he wants back on the team, he'll get back on the team. And if he's better than the guys in front of him on the depth chart, he'll be the guy to carry the ball. There, I, there's just there's just no way there's no way around that. There is a counter argument to be made because we we haven't even taken a look at this from the recruiting perspective. What does it say for guys that you're recruiting at the running back position? Now, none of this has happened, so it's all speculation. Mm -hmm. But what does it say for the guys that you're recruiting at the running back position if a guy leaves and you allow him to rejoin the team? Not only rejoin it, but retake the starting role. I, look, it says coach has got my back. Look, if you're Samar Wheaton... Or it says, okay, just because... In the future, oh, I'm going to use Seth McGowan because we've thrown his name out a lot. McGowan declares, okay, doesn't officially declare for the draft, but word is circulating. And he's like, nah, I, I think I'm going to come back. That I know is not a good example at all. It's a terrible example. It is a terrible example. <laughs> Seth McGowan, I, I think, could be one of those guys that if Kennedy Brooks comes back, you see him begin no, to. No, Seth, Seth McGowan committed to this team knowing Kennedy Brooks was going to be here. Right. And and but if he here's here's knowing what he was going to be here for this upcoming season. Yeah, but here's but what you're missing two, in all of this. Three down the road. Here's what you're missing. The, the, this is the, the 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 dart that's not sticking to the wall, okay? This is not a normal year. It's not normal. So it's not like he just decided I'm leaving the team. He was given an out if he wanted to set out because of COVID, mm -hmm. and that's what he chose to do. Whether you agree with that or don't agree with that, clearly there's a bunch of other guys on the team who feel like they can take the risk and they can better themselves and they're going to do it. They, they feel like being on this team is the best thing for me. Kennedy Brooks felt as if being away from the team is the best thing for me. So that this is an anomaly. This is not normal. This is not a usual situation. And so Kennedy Brooks wants back on this team. He will be welcomed back on the team with open arms. And now, he will I'm, be given the opportunity to prove himself. At that point, it's up to Seth McGowan to say, you know what? You took a year off, buddy. I took your spot. I'm better than you. Lincoln Riley's not going to give a spot away to anybody. They got to earn it. And so that, there's, that is not going to affect recruiting. It's not going to affect the guys on the depth chart. What's going to affect the guys on the depth chart is the depth chart itself. I'm not looking at the decision and passing judgment. I'm looking at the message. Why that do you it hate sends. Kennedy Brooks? I'm looking at the message that it sends. If he, by some way, some pathway, 
it leads him back to the University of Oklahoma. I'm looking at that message, not only that it sends to current players in the maybe I've got your back, but potential guys that you would sign at the same position. Uh, like, uh, maybe it has no bearing because you're sitting over here yeah, shaking your head uh, no, in it, complete disgust. All it does is it puts it puts Lincoln. I, I promise you, those guys in the locker room right now, those guys in that running back room, and a guy like Samar Wheaton, who is being heavily recruited, and a lot of people, including myself, believe he's coming to the University of Oklahoma. They understand this situation a lot more than you and I do. Mm-hmm. They they get it, and they they are going to have confidence that Lincoln Riley is there for them. If there's an ever another abnormal situation like this, this is not a guy putting his name in the transfer portal it does, and then coming back. It brings up a, a major question for me, and it's one that Patty Gasso has been asking for quite some time in the scholarship limits. Look, the NCAA has already said everyone gets a do-over, so I, I think we're going to see scholarship limits increase by about 15. I think they were, I think they're going to. I I don't think the NCAA is going to do that. I think what the NCAA is going to do is they're going to increase it by the situation. So whatever number of guys you had that were supposed to leave your program, that's how many extra scholarships you have. So you're going to look at upperclassmen, draft eligible guys, and they were supposed to leave. Well, you can keep that many extra scholarships. Yeah, but when they grant you an extra year of eligibility, whether you played or didn't play. Right. That's what I'm saying. Now that's, we're in trouble. No, that's why that's why the scholarship limits are going to go by the number of guys that, are, that should have left your program. Because if you blanket it, hey, we're going to give you 15 extra scholarships, there will be abuse there. But if we give you extra scholarships based on the guys that want to come back, then there's no abuse. Well, there's a, a lesser chance of abuse. Hey, I want to move on. I want to stick on the same subject, but I have a second question, and we're 20 minutes into this segment, so we're already over time. The Oklahoma's running back room right now, as it sits, Seth McGowan, TJ Pledger, Todd Hudson, Marcus Major, Jaden Knowles, Ramondre Stevenson. Who has the most to gain? by Kennedy Brooks being gone. Um, the initial name is TJ Pledger, and it's because he's a junior. Mm-hmm. I get that there are a couple of talented running backs on this roster that just don't have the same experience in the system. The The one guy that everybody seems to be the most excited about is Marcus Major, but we're not even sure of what Seth McGowan's capable of. I think we see a heavy dosage rotation-wise of these three individuals that I've already named until they come up with a rotation, until they come up with a one-two punch that works. There's plenty of talent there, as I've mentioned. There's plenty of size. You look at Marcus Major, 5'11", 224. He's going to be the biggest back that's available on day one. Is he going to be that ground and pound guy in the fourth quarter, or are you going to see him early? Like I said, there's plenty of different options there for each of these names, and there's a role for each of them. Mm -hmm. TJ Pledger being the smallest, is he going to be the most shifty of that trio? Is he going to be the guy who you want to to throw in a, a difference of pace? Is that who you go with? Again, we'll find out once they <laughs> work all right. three of these guys in to see what kind of a rotation works best for them in the early going. And then, of course, Ramondre Stevenson, when he comes back, I, I think is going to play a bigger role than what we're expecting him to at this point in time, given that Brooks has removed himself mm-hmm. from the situation. Okay, so here's what I'm going to say. This is maybe a little bit controversial, but I'm going to say it because I believe it, and I may have to defend it at another time, but... Marcus Major is the most NFL-ready back that Oklahoma is going to put out there on day one. When you look at this, um, the, the guys that are available, that we know are available on day one, he's he's better than Seth McGowan. He's more ready than TJ Pledger. Todd Hudson, God bless you for being on the roster. Um, Jaden Knowles, God bless you for being on the roster. Marcus Major is the most NFL-ready guy that will be available on September 12th when they play well, Missouri State. And we hope so because, you know, Major's still recovering – I'm using air quotes yeah. over here. He'll, he'll be ready. Recovering from an injury. Right. I just I, I know that, that we say guys lose a step nah. more often than yeah. not. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm noting that down in my book. Just going to put an asterisk Yeah, and it. I'm moving okay. on. So Marcus Major, most NFL-ready NFL guy as a redshirt freshman. But the guy who stands the most to gain from this decision is Ramondre Stevenson. Because unlike the situation you previously discussed, <laughs> Ramondre Steven disqualified himself. From mm-hmm. participating not only in the college football playoff, but the first half of the season. Right. Ramondre Stevenson was going to be in the doghouse. 
he probably still will be in the doghouse, but that doghouse has a much shorter leash now because you need Ramondre Stevenson. You didn't need him earlier because— You mean longer leash. No, sh- yeah, sorry, longer leash. Yeah, you're right. Um, I was you, trying to think what yeah, was sorry, happening here. Sorry, sorry, yeah, you're right. Um, you did not need him earlier because you had Kennedy Brooks. Mm-hmm. Now you don't have Kennedy Brooks. Ramondre Stevenson is your leading returning rusher. You need him. And so here's what's great about Ramondre's situation. Part of the, the the to me, the greatest travest part of this travesty uh, was that he was going to be a senior, right? Not anymore. Not anymore. He'll get that fifth year of eligibility. If, if they give everyone a do-over, regardless of whether you play or you don't play. Now, this has not been approved, but it's highly being discussed. If everyone gets a do-over, if Ramondre wants to come back, he can come back. This dude can gain a lot. Because I believe he's an NFL guy. If he's available day one, to me, he's the most NFL-ready guy day one. But he's not going to be available day one. But he is going to see his draft stock rise if he comes back and plays a full senior season. Mm -hmm. So we talk about tape. He's got limited tape right now. It's good tape, but it's limited tape. He can get more tape 2020. But 2021, this guy can set him up to be a second-round third round, maybe even a first round draft pick. He's got the most to gain. This is a Sooner Nation podcast. He's Rich. I'm Matt. True or false coming up. Richard gets to ask the questions. And what's up with the Sooner Summit?